Welcome fellow Dazzlers and new players alike to the first of many MAME intro videos where we'll be going over the different parts of MAME and arcade emulation in general. The goal of this series here is to give you in-depth info that not only tells you how to do the thing, but what the thing is exactly, and how it works. Also, if you like what you see, don't forget to insert a thumbs up on the video, and as always, we welcome comments of most sorts. If you have some insight or want to know something more in depth, let us know. We're always reading our comments and uh, replying where we can. We've also got ways you can help support the channel in the description below, but we'll touch base on that at the end of the video. Let's get right into the action. So, what is an arcade ROM? A ROM, which is short for read only memory, is a computer file that has a copy of data from a ROM chip. These usually come from something like a video game cartridge, or it can come from other things as well. In the world of arcade games, ROM files are typically generated from the arcade game's PCB. Uh, PCBs are, to put it simply, the main circuit board for the game. The data for the game is contained within a zip file that has all the pieces of the data for the game. Usually but we can take a look at why it wouldn't some other time. I'll also be going over a couple other things in this video that explains why files might be missing from the zip file. You may also notice the zip file might not be the exact name of the game you're looking to play. For example, the ROM file for Splatterhouse is splatter.zip. And keep in mind, your ROM file has to have that name. If you were to change it to splatterhouse.zip, for instance, man wouldn't be able to find it, and it's really just down to how MAME was built and programmed. That's something that unfortunately you can't change with the emulator. Another thing you might notice about the game titles is there might be a bunch of other info in the title. Going back to Splatterhouse as an example again, in MAME you'll see three different versions of the game with the names Splatterhouse World New Version SH3, Splatterhouse Japan SH1, and Splatterhouse World Old Version SH2. These are all basically just the different versions of the game that were released, or at least have been dumped and cataloged in MAME, and that extra info can be useful, as it can let you know what region you're playing, or even how many players it supports. For example, X-Men has different versions for different amounts of players such as 4 and the massive 6 player version. Other games, for example, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, has a version that supports only 2 players, and another version that supports 4 players. Another aspect of ROMs are parent and clone child split ROMs, but we'll take a look at that later in the video. Let's go ahead and move on to the next. So you might be wondering, how do you get ROMs? Most players will probably obtain their ROMs either from torrents or ROM download sites. Uh, unfortunately, even if you may have come to this video wondering where to get ROMs or where to find these sites, due to legal reasons we can't really link you where to download ROMs for free. It's kind of illegal. I know other channels do it, but we don't want to take any risks. Please understand. There are other ways to legally obtain ROMs as well, however, and I don't mean just buying the Capcom Beam Up bundle off of Steam, although that isn't too bad of a port. If you have the expertise and know-how, in addition to arcade PCBs, you can dump the ROM directly to your computer. But from what I've seen, it can be quite the process, in addition, PCBs can be expensive, easily running you $100 plus. Other ways could be from modern day ports of arcade classics. Now, Razzle's already gone over how to pull the ROMs out of the Neo Geo 25th Anniversary Collection, and even though that bundle is old and has been renamed the Neo Geo Classics Complete Edition. Actually, in fact, we even tested the Humble Bundle Store's release of Samurai Showdown 5 Special, and we're still able to pull the ROM out without having to, de without having to decrypt anything. On the official main site, there's also a bunch of ROMs by XCD that can be downloaded for free legally. Not the most impressive games, but if you're looking for a quick download to test things out, there you go. That's about it when it comes to obtaining ROMs, but what about the legality of ROMs? Are ROMs legal from a US perspective? To be straight, it seems like a legally giant gray area. If you go and research this, you'll be told one thing, another thing, and even more things, which makes the thing really confusing, with the exception of uh, certain things. Downloading a ROM when you don't own the game is illegal. MAME will actually tell you this too if you play a game for the first time in MAME. Some say that if you own the exact game it might be legal to download, but others will still say that it's still illegal. And the other issue is there's never been a solid legal precedent established. As companies like Nintendo prefer to chase after ROM hosting sites to take down those rather than individual players. What I mean by that is, if you go and you search online, you're probably not going to find a court case where someone was sued for downloading and playing Pac-Man on their computer. 
I think there's been problems and cases where people have downloaded ROMs, made a cabinet, and then tried to charge people to play the cabinet, but not private use. Speaking of which, sharing ROMs is also unmistakably illegal. So don't rush off to build your own ROM hosting site just yet, and this is a problem a lot of sites like Amy Paradise have ran into. Some will even argue that backing up your own ROMs can be seen as illegal. But again, there's really no solid case that sets this as precedent, so it's still up in the air. Some also toss around the whole legally gray thing in the sense that while downloading and playing, say, Ninja Baseball Batman is illegal, and yes, that's an actual game, the company that produced the game isn't making any money off the sales of the game in any form, so you're technically not damaging them financially, so there's no direct incentive for Irene to come after you. A lot of people will tell you this is why Capcom don't chase after people, or why whatever maker doesn't chase after people, because you're not making money off the cabinets anyways, but it's still kind of, it's kind of like abandonware, where it's technically illegal, but nobody's really been busted for it. I tend to compare it to downloading music. Downloading music is illegal, but when's the last time you heard of somebody getting, like, sued for ripping a song off YouTube, for instance? But regardless, I should also mention that this is just what I found on my own and is partially my own opinion. Don't take this as legal advice. If you want a for sure 100% legal answer, your best bet will always be to talk to a lawyer. And I know it's just simulation and it seems silly to point that out, but it's just, we kind of have to say that because we're talking about legal stuff. You might also ask, well, Nico, you guys admit to using emulators in your videos. Are you kind of enabling the illegal downloading of ROMs? Well. If we are playing games that we do not own, that's a risk we've decided to take in order to try to keep arcade games around and alive here on YouTube and wherever we go. If you do decide to download ROMs on your own after watching one of our videos, you're going to assume whatever risks are involved. Don't point the fingers at us. That's on you to go and do all of that. But again, we're just saying things for legal reasons. My ROM doesn't work. What gives? Well. Non-working ROMs can be a very complex thing, or as Razzle would put it, things can get stupid complex stupid quickly. It can be a large number of things from using the wrong emulator, as a meme can't run everything. For example, if you're trying to play a Model 2 game such as House of the Dead, you're going to need a Model 2 emulator. You could also be playing an out-of-date ROM, uh, you could have a missing file because it was a bad dump, no BIOS file, no CHID, and so on. My best suggestion is take a look at what MAME says when it tells you that you can't that it can't run a game. It'll let you know what you're missing and you can research from there where to find things. Let's say you're missing the Neo Geo BIOS. It'll tell you. It'll complain that hey, I can't find this file, this game can't run. And then you can write that down and kind of do more digging on that. We are planning on doing a more in-depth video on what happens to ROMs don't work in MAME, however, so if you got MAME problems, leave a MAME comment and we'll try to get you a MAME solution. That was incredibly cheesy. And then there was the whole thing about parent ROMs and split child clone ROMs. And I say that because I've heard them called these different things. So long story short, parent ROMs can be thought of as the master ROM that has all the data and files that the child or split ROMs will use. Split or clone ROMs are the other versions of the game and contain a little more than whatever few files are needed to run that split, drawing primarily from the parent ROM. If you don't have the parent ROM and only the split, well tough noogies. You can't run the game. Now how can you tell if something is a parent ROM or a split ROM? That's easy. Let's go back to Splatterhouse. Notice how World New Version has those other versions underneath it with that little indent. Well, that means the World New Version is the parent ROM and the others are the split ROMs. Yeah, a main emulation tends to be a little bit more complex than most other emulation out there, but we kind of love it all the same. Now you may have heard about ROM sets. What are those exactly? ROM sets kind of what it sound like. A set of ROMs. Now, you may have heard ROM sets in two different contexts, such as a set of ROMs tailored for a specific release of MAME. And then some folks may not like to use the newest version of MAME or have their own preferred older version of MAME that they like to use. So, ROM sets can be tailored to those older versions. They could also be tailored to the new releases that come out. You may hear of like updated ROMs or updated ROM sets. There's different ways of updating that, like, um, obtaining them through whatever site or updating them using clear main pro which we're still trying to figure out how to get that to work uh, or you know dumping them on your own rom sets can also refer to a full set for a game or rom as well as i understand it for example the aforementioned parent and split roms for splatterhouse would be the full rom set 
And I think that's all you would need to know as far as the basics of ROMs. I mean, you may be wondering how to install ROMs and BIOS and CHIDs, and Razzle has a video where he kind of explains that. I'll link you the abridged version so you don't have to listen to him yammer on about everything I just told you what, you know, that I just told you in this video. So, um, that is about it. That covers the basics. So now you've got some technical info on what ROMs are and where exactly they come from where you can get them, the legality of them, possible reasons why they won't work, the difference between parent and child split clone ROMs and ROM sets. If there's anything I missed that you want more coverage on, you need only leave a comment, I'll either answer or add it to the list and put a potential future video. And thank you so much for watching. Remember, if you like this video, to insert a thumbs up, leave a comment, especially if there's something you want to point out, share the video, check out the description for ways, uh, and check out the description for ways to help support us. On top of that, don't forget to, uh, if you subscribe, ring the little bell. I know a lot of people tell you that, but we tend to just, like, throw out things whenever. Like, this was an unplanned video, so ring the bell will let you know when we are up to some kind of mischief. As far as ways to help support the channel, we've got a Ko-fi if you want to do a one-time donation, Patreon for more long-term support, and we are working on rewards other than just a special thanks for those who donate. And you can also check out TubeBuddy, which is an affiliate link, so if you do download or purchase any services of that, we will get a compensation with no additional cost to you. TubeBuddy is an amazing tool that has lots of great features and things to help you build your channel and help it get found. In fact, this video is most likely brought to you by the tools we used with it, like the Keyword Explorer to help us find the right keywords to target so people can actually find the video, because nobody wants to be at the complete mercy of the mysterious algorithm. And then there's also social media if you want to follow the manager and see whatever random ramblings he's up to. Once again, I want to thank you for watching, and this is Nicolini, signing off. Feel flat. Feel flat.